So what do we mean when we talk about documenting data? The main goal is to make sure your data set is understood correctly by anyone who finds it. Therefore, you need to include a human readable description that gives the big picture as well as more details on what your data set is all about. The metadata you enter is one part of this, but you should also write a readme file where you include all information necessary to interpret and understand your data set correctly. Remember to start creating the readme file early and then enter more information as your project proceeds. Some information may be entered at the planning phase. Some may be entered as you collect or generate the data. And you finalize the readme file as you make your data set ready to be archived. As already mentioned, the purpose of the readme file is that anyone should be able to interpret and understand your data correctly. So what needs to be included in the readme file will differ from dataset to dataset, depending on what kind of data they hold. But still, there are some generic recommendations on what should be included. Make sure people are able to contact you. People interested in your dataset may have questions to ask, and it may be the beginning of a new fruitful research cooperation for you. Make it easy for others to understand what information the dataset holds. If your dataset holds lots of files, it will be great help if you explain how the files are structured and also the logic behind the file names. Make sure the file names are informative and give, if, if, and give information on what data are found in each file. It may be obvious from the file names and the folder structure, but otherwise, give an overview of what data are found where in the dataset. And if your dataset is updated, remember also to update your README file. You may also look for examples of README files. There are a number of other information elements that should be included in the README file. Keep in mind that information that seems obvious to you may not be so obvious to others. And also remember, knowledge that is crisp and clear in your head today is fading quite fast. You may want to go back to your own dataset sometime into the future. Make sure you don't have to spend lots of time to understand what information your dataset holds. Here is a little test for you. Please pause the video, read the question, and then evaluate each of the listed elements and make up your mind whether they belong in the README file or not. So which of these elements belong in the README file? A short description of what the dataset is about. Yes, this should be included in the README file to make sure users understand what your dataset is all about. An overview of the files and the folders, which data are found where. Yes, this should also be included in the README file. It will be very helpful in guiding your users. The author's assessment of the dataset's value to others. Hmm. Now, this is not common to include. It will not be easy to give an assessment of this. A description of the data generating methods used. Oh yes, this should be included in the README file. Information on the method used will be vital in evaluating what information the data holds. Why do we need the README file in addition to a rich metadata schema? First, you do not have to duplicate the information both in the metadata and in the README file. The most important is that information in the metadata and the README file together give a good documentation and understanding of the dataset. But keep in mind that the information entered as structured metadata will be much better searchable compared to the information in the README file. So 
So for the purpose of making your data set findable through search, good metadata quality is the key. The readme file is commonly meant to supplement the metadata. You may also view the readme file as a standalone documentation file and thus do include some duplicated information from the metadata. And if the dataset is updated, make sure to update the readme file to reflect this and document what has been updated. Archiving your files is in preferred format is important. And this goes, of course, also for the readme file. Do not risk that the readme file is difficult or impossible to open some years into the future. You may use PDF, especially if your readme file includes figures and illustrations. Make sure to use the archival proof PDF version, PDF.